Wheat breeding activities in Kenya are crucial to the development and adoption of modern rust-resistant wheat varieties globally. The DRRW supports the Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization, or CALRO, in the discovery and screening of new resistance genes and gene combinations. These activities greatly benefit wheat farmers in Kenya and the world over by enhancing productivity and contributing to the disease resistance of the global wheat crop. I want the farmers to understand and be able to control and be able to grow varieties so that they are able to, to, to get enough for themselves. If you look at the small scale farmers who are not able to produce enough for sale, they are not educating their children. They are not going to hospitals. They are not feeding uh, balanced meals. Wheat is the second most important cereal crop in Kenya. It is grown on about 180,000 hectares of, of, uh, of land. Our production is about 450,000 metric tons per year, which is just about half of the national requirements. So we have to uh, import the, the balance of about 450,000 metric tons per year. And as the population grows, the demand for wheat is going to increase. The farmers we are targeting are the small-scale farmers. Our target is to get them to about four tons per hectare. That one will improve the wheat production in Kenya by more than 40%. In 2010, wheat breeders in Kenya released the variety Robin. Robin was widely adopted by farmers because of its high yields and resistance to yellow rust and stem rust UG99. Because it was so successful for farmers, Robin quickly became one of Kenya's main varieties. In 2014, a new challenge arose when Robin's resistance was defeated by a new variant of stem rust. This is Robin. Last year there was no disease. 40% of the wheat being grown by farmers in Kenya is uh, Robin. You can, you can see now this one is no longer resistant. And you can see the crop is still very young. By the time it's maturing, it will be dead. The gene is no longer effective. There could be another race, which is with the same UG99 lineage with added virulence to SRTMP gene, which needs further confirmation. We have other varieties which are still standing, like Ego 10. We also have uh, Kingbird. So we still have those ones to get to the farmers who, who will now have to change. The battle for rust resistance is always a continuous ongoing process. And the more you shift towards resistance, the pathogen also tends to survive and uh, tries to mutate to produce new virulent races that tend to defeat the genes. Meet Julius. He manages a 40 hectare wheat farm planted with Robin. It's just a few weeks before harvest, but the disease has taken hold and the plants are dying. Speaking in Swahili, he confessed to us that he only sprayed 25% of the recommended fungicide dose. In previous years, this may have been enough to delay the infection process and provide adequate protection against crop loss, but not this year. The main challenge indeed is rust. Uh, this, uh, he says that he had acquired the fungicides in time, but uh, they, uh, he sprayed uh, uh, what I understand is an underdose of the chemical. Actually, the recommended rate is a liter per hectare, but he did 0.25 liters per hectare, which is quite low. And uh, probably that is the, the, the reason why you've seen such a high pressure on his crop of the disease. In breeding, we are trying to reduce the, the inputs, especially the agrochemicals. We have to keep on breeding. We have to keep on telling the farmers to change the varieties and that is a big, big, big challenge. Global collaborations in tackling emerging agricultural challenges is very important because no one organization or individual is self-sufficient. We need to be able to work together. This is a very successful model whereby several institutions collaborated using scientists of different backgrounds and different uh, disciplines to come up and solve a problem. The immense challenge of protecting the world's wheat crop requires an international scientific community with advanced technical expertise. To help build this global capacity, 
Every year, scientists from national programs, universities, and international plant breeding centers come to the Enduro Station to participate in DRRW's Wheat Breeding and Rust Pathology Training Course. In the course, theoretical instruction and practical fieldwork are combined into a rigorous, week-long workshop. We try to combine the basic principles of host pathogen genetics with plant breeding and try to extrapolate that information to, uh, to the farm field. This is an investment in the future. Many of the scientists who come here are young scientists just entering their career. They are exposed to some very intense training, I think, for the, for the two weeks that they're here. When I was doing my BSc, you know, we were not doing that much practical. Like we were just told in crop pathology, we were told the rust diseases, they were just mentioning. But here at the training, I was able to identify them in the field. As at now, I know the criteria for selection and I can score for the diseases. It will really help me. At least it has exposed me to what I'm supposed to be doing as a plant breeder. We got the opportunity just to look our own material, what we have sent from Pakistan uh, to here for uh, screening against this stem rust resistance. And this is really uh, the practical opportunity for us. And uh, from here, we are taking message back to our country. Through the DRRW, scientists in national wheat breeding programs and international CGIAR centers across 22 countries have sent hundreds of thousands of wheat lines to Kenya for evaluation. The wheat lines that survive rigorous testing in Njoro may move on to become publicly released varieties in Kenya and other DRRW partner countries. Kalro Njoro has provided a phenotyping platform for screening uh, wheat uh, germplasm from all over the world. So far, 350,000 lines have been uh, screened. The, the facility has a capacity of 50,000 lines annually, and we have been screening materials from 25 countries. We have also facilitated the, the shuttle breeding between Simit and, and Kenya. The Wheat Breeding Initiative in Kenya complements the shuttle breeding program initially developed by Norman Borlaug in the 1940s in Mexico. The original shuttle breeding technique involved transporting potential wheat lines from the northern wheat breeding fields of La Ciudad Obregón to southern breeding fields in Toluca and El Batán, and back again. This allowed Borlaug to plant and harvest two generations of seed each year, cutting the time it took to develop new varieties in half. Because the shuttle breeding sites have differing latitudes, diseases, soils, climates, and day length, Borlaug's breeding scheme resulted in wheat varieties that were adapted to a wide range of agronomic conditions. The DRRW is taking Borlaug's system to the next level. The Enjoro station operates as the third link in the shuttle breeding chain, ensuring that Simit's wheat lines are resistant to diseases like yellow rust and stem rust UG99, while further increasing their global adaptability and the rate of genetic advancement of the breeding program. Taking advantage of the um, shuttle breeding approach that Dr. Borlaug had developed uh, back at Simit, we wanted to initiate a similar process with Kenya called as the Simit Kenya shuttle breeding to ensure that we have the resistance against this disease, UG99. So usually we receive materials back from Simit at F3 and F4 segregating materials um, that are tested here for two seasons. We are screening against UG99, but we're also looking at the agronomic type, which could be quite useful in terms of identifying lines which are better adapted to the given environment. And in addition to that, we also have other factors, like we have natural uh, yellow rust infection, which also helps us to identify lines which are resistant to both the diseases. A lot of infrastructural upgrades have been done um, to facilitate better phenotyping against this disease at Carlo. So some of the infrastructural upgrades have been land leveling, fertility management, uh, construction of the reservoir. This project has contributed to increase in production from 2.5 uh, metric tons to 3 metric tons per, per hectare. Adoption also of these new varieties has been very high by farmers. This has significantly contributed to our food security and to socioeconomic income of our farmers. We have released eight varieties which are related to DRLW and we have seven in the line awaiting release.
So far we have screened close to about 350,000 entries from almost about 20 to 25 different countries and research institutions. Globally we've released close to about 45 varieties. With the DRLW there is such an impact. Initially some farmers would go out to get varieties to come and uh, grow them in Kenya. But today they have confidence that we have the best varieties for them. So we have changed the, la the, the way farmers think about research and the way they think about curry. Before the DRRW, there were no surveys. Breeders thought the varieties they had in the field were, were, were resistant to, to the stem rust. And now when the stem rust at, uh, came, it got us by surprise. We are able to go out there, we are able to monitor the, how the varieties are performing. There's a big change that we, we are actually able to move and talk to the farmers. Up to now we are better than we were before the project. Farmers understand why the project is here, why the varieties are being released, what attributes they are going to get from the new varieties. The, the, the varieties after the DRW project are really moving fast because they are demand driven. You cannot just breed a variety and expect somebody to adopt something they, are not, they didn't even request, they didn't even require. We look at the attributes that farmers demand, we look at the attributes that the consumers want, so we have to involve all the value chain, everybody within the value chain in the breeding program. For improved food security of this country, other developing countries and globally, research must be always ahead of production. And research is a continuous process. To the Kenyan wheat scientists and farmers, I would like to encourage them to continue practicing cutting-edge research invo involving collaboration with their scientists, networking with their scientists, partnerships and collaborations are very important, has been, has, has been exhibited in this particular initiative. To me, there is hope that, that the resistant varieties will be there. We cannot stop. We have to, to continue. We have to to get new varieties, we have to feed the people.